In this video, we are gonna discuss the solution to question nine from the practice midterm exam in Calculus 2, Math 1220. Um, and we have in front of us a hydrostatic force problem. A trough is filled with a liquid of density of 840 kilograms per meters cubed. That feels like a lot. Um, what is this, like mercury or something? I don't know. Uh, so we have a trough that's filled with a liquid of density 840 kilograms per meters cubed. The end of the trough, um, the, ends, the ends of the trough are equilateral triangles. So this is actually going to form for us our, our plate for which it's going to be submerged in this liquid. It's not water, but honestly, the fact that we're using a different liquid other than water will change the density, but it won't make much of a consequence other than that, right? So our density value here we see is going to be rho is 840. I'll show you how that compensates in a moment. But our we have equilateral triangles, uh, and the vertex is at the bottom, uh, like you see right here. And we see that the side lengths are 8 meters long. So it's 8 meters across the top. Um, it's 8 meters diagonally right here as well. Uh, so we want to set up the integral for the hydrostatic force on one end of the trough. And we're going to use acceleration for gravity to be 9.8 meters per second squared. This is a setup, do not solve the integral type thing. So when it comes to hydrostatic force, uh, the general, the guiding principle you want to use here is that the hydrostatic force is going to equal the integral of pressure times the area of a cross section, where a typical cross section is going to look something like this right here. Now, because it didn't say anything about a variable, we can define our variable to whatever we want. And I think the easiest setting is always going to be set x equals zero to be the top of the water. Uh, this thing is completely filled here. Um, it's, it said the trough is filled, so it's all the way to the top. So start at the top, x equals zero, and point the positive x direction downward. Um, what this accomplishes for us is that, we'll note, pressure is going to equal our, it's going to enter this, it's the, the, the pressure is going to equal this delta times the depth, d here, where delta is these constant coefficients that show up here. It's going to incorporate the density of the liquid, which is 840 kilograms per meters cubed. It's also going to incorporate the acceleration due to gravity. So delta here, delta is going to equal gravity times uh, the density rho, right? This is if we use scientific units. And, and if you're using British or American units, you don't need to multiply by the acceleration due to gravity because in that situation, you would have pounds per cubic foot. And pounds is already a force. It's not a mass, which is a subtle difference here. So you only have to multiply by 9.8. Um, for scientific units, and honestly, because this is not a physics class, I don't expect you to memorize this number. So I'll actually tell you to multiply by 9.8, basically. If you don't see the 9.8, don't multiply it. And so getting back to pressure here, you're going to have 9.8 times 840 times the depth. Well, if you set x equals 0 to be the top of the water and you point x downward, then depth will just equal x, which is really nice. Depth will just equal x. And so this gives us our pressure right here, 9.8 times 840 times x, which if you want to multiply those things together, you can. I don't need you to. If you leave a fact, it's perfectly fine. This gives us the pressure. Um, now in terms of area, right, how do we deal with the area? This is actually the hard part of the problem. Well, we have a rectangle over here, which is our cross section. It's a rectangle. Its width is going to be a dx. Its length is going to be, well, a length L. That's, that's kind of the hard part here. Area will be length times dx. This is typically the hard part of a hydrostatic force problem because the cross sections are always rectangles and the thickness will always be a dx or dy depending on what you name the variable. So how do we describe L right here? Well, to, to begin with, what I want to mention here is that we do have this equilateral triangle. The height of the triangle is going to be relevant for our discussion here. Um, the height of the triangle. This is a right triangle, which one angle is 60 degrees. The other angle will be 30 degrees. Uh, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, you can use some trigonometry with cosines of 30 degrees, 60 degrees, or a cosine of 30 degrees, 60 degrees. But if we know that this length here, my picture is kind of getting messy. I'm going to draw it somewhere else here. If we cut the triangle in half, where this length is 8, and this is, again, our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Then my symmetry, the top, would actually be 4. And then this side over here is going to be 4 times the square root of 3. Uh, again, you can just use like a, you can use a cosine argument or a tangent or something. So you can use some Sokotoa arguments to figure out the other side. Or that's one that many people just memorize as this, this 30, 60, 90 triangle. We do know the height of the triangle is 4 root 3. 
Um, the other thing, the other thing that's important here is we're going to set up a similar triangle, right? We're going to set this triangle up, which is this big one, with a little triangle right here, which this little triangle is going to look like the following. We're going to have half of L, one half L right here. And then I also want to mention that the, notice the way we set up X, the distance from the top of the plate to the cross section, that's what we mean by X, which means the, the remainder is going to be the total height with this four root three minus X. And that's what's going to go right here, four root three minus X. And so if we try to set up a proportion argument going on there, see what we're going to get. We're going to get um, L halves. It corresponds to four. This will sit above four root three minus X, which will correspond to four root three. Uh, so cross multiply here, we're gonna end up with two root three L is equal to uh, 16 root three minus four X. And so divide by two root three on both sides. Uh, we end up with, getting a little crowded here in my space, in the end, we end up with an L is equal to, let's see, we're going to get 8 minus 2 over square root 3x. That's our L value, in which case we then want to put that in for, we're going to put that in for our L. That's what we had there. Like so. And so putting this together, right, force... The hydrostatic force is pressure times area. So we have our area right here. We have now, sorry, we have the area right there and then the, the pressures right there. So putting those all together, we're gonna integrate the pressure, which was 9.8 times 840 times X, that's the pressure. And then we're gonna times that by eight square root of three minus two X DX. That was the length times the, the width right there. Uh, just double checking our math right there. That looks pretty good. Oh, I'm sorry, I put the square root of three in the wrong spot. Uh, let, me, let me fix that. Eight minus um, x over the square root of three dx. That was the L value we found below. Oh, sorry, there was a two there as well. Apparently I can't even copy my own answers down. Eight minus two x over the square root of three. Right, that's good, that's good. Um, so the only thing we have left to do is identify the bounds, right? And so looking at our diagram right here, what are the acceptable values of x? We could have x at the very top, which like we said before, that x, that's x equals zero. And at the very bottom, that would correspond to x equals four root three. And so those are gonna be the bounds we set up here. We're gonna go from zero to four root three. So there's a lot of details going on here. Uh, but this is this would give us the correct antiderivative. We don't need to we don't need to simplify anything really here, and multiply out because we're not trying to evaluate. Just want you to set it up. So things I'm going to look for on this one is I do want to see the correct bounds. This thing should go from zero to four root three, right? I want to make sure that the pressure is there, nine point eight times eight forty times x. I want to make sure that the area is correct, and that includes the differential dx. Um, if you're missing a dx there, that's going to be a forfeiture of a point. Um, so make sure you have your differential as it's part of the integral. Now, this is just one example of how one could set up this integral. We based it on the assumption that x equals 0 is the top of the plate. Um, another possibility would be to set x equals 0 at the bottom of the plate. I think that sets up a slightly more complicated integral, but it is still correct. And so I, I will accept any correct integrals that you can come up with. It depends on your coordinate system. And as such, it can be very useful to actually specify with a diagram what is your coordinate system that makes it easier for me as I'm grading it. Um, and therefore, a happy grader makes a happy student. Am I right? Am I right? And that gives us an example of one of hydrostatic force. This one's a little bit more technical than others, but it was deliberately chosen for this practice exam to give you one that would stretch you uh, maybe a little bit beyond what you saw in the homework, perhaps.